everyone, what's up? My name is Joss, and welcome back to my channel, Squibbles Reads. Today I will be reviewing Furthermore by Takara Mafi and This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. I will be starting with Furthermore, so if you are just here for this savage song, I will leave that timestamp in the down bar below so you can just jump right on over to that. Furthermore is a middle grade novel written by Takara Mafi, who also wrote the Shatter Me series. And if you guys have been with me for a while, you will know that the Shatter Me series and I are not the greatest of friends, to say the least, but I've always really enjoyed Takara Mafi. Mafi's social media presence and she seems just so kind and so approachable and sweet that I did want to give her books another chance so I picked up an arc of Furthermore at BEA this year. This is a story of a girl named Alice Alexis Queensmeadow and she lives in the town of Farinwood which is bursting and singing with color and vibrancy but she herself is completely absent of color on her own body besides her eyes. Lately she's been feeling like she doesn't belong and has been feeling lonely and distant because her father who she really loved disappeared a few years ago and her birthday is coming up and on that day she can prove that her magic is worthy of this fantastical journey that she and go on to try and figure out the mystery of her father's disappearance. So she is granted this journey and she is joined by a companion named Oliver who also knows magic but is a little bit different than Alice's magic. Furthermore it was a super fun and really whimsical tale and I did really really enjoy it and I'm so relieved and thankful to say that. It is a really big whirlwind adventure that I did find that I had to be in the right mindset for because it is a little bit upside down and roly-poly and silly, but I don't think that it was juvenile in any way. So this really showed in the writing style. So for example, there was a sentence that said, Alice's body was goosebumps from head to heel instead of something more conventional, like Alice's body was covered in goosebumps from head to toe. It was written in third person as a narrator that kind of acted like an overseer because he or she would interject from time to time with their own comments. I found this really enhanced my personal experience of the book because it was kind of like looking into a storybook or fairy tale and it just kind of made me feel real warm and cozy inside. There are books that I've read before where this outside voice didn't really work, but in this I think it did. And part of that is to do with the building of the magic system. A lot of things, they you just kind of have to believe them. It's that fairy tale where magic just appears out of nowhere. But it really does work in this topsy-turvy, unexplainable nature of this world, and the writing, and the overseer narrator. All of that kind of came together and worked well. I also really love what the book did with self-expression. So Alice, who was totally absent of color, really liked to express herself in terms of the bright and colorful and I guess eccentric clothing that she would wear. That's something that a lot of people found a little bit odd, but she really owned it and she did a good job with it. And I think that's just a message that is really good to reinforce. Something else that I appreciated was that Oliver was portrayed as a person of color. He was described to have brown skin and on the cover right there, he is shown to have that brown skin. Another theme that I thought was really prominent and done well was the theme of absence. So the absence of color in Alice's body, the absence of her father's presence in her life, leading to the absence of a sense of security and belonging. Something else that I have to note is that I do think that this was inspired by or at least has the same vibes of Alice in Wonderland which is a story that a lot of people have strong feelings about. I personally am neither here nor there about Alice in Wonderland. I'm not super acquainted with the story and thus I didn't really compare furthermore to it but if you are one of the people that have strong feelings about Alice in Wonderland just kind of take caution jumping into this. Overall I thought furthermore was a really fun ride so I did give it four out of five stars. So now let's move on to This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. This is a YA novel, the first book in the Monsters of Verity duology. It is set in a post-apocalyptic world 12 years after an event called the Phenomenon, after which monsters are born from humans committing bad or villainous acts. There are three types of monsters, the Corsite, the Malkai, and the Sunai. And the Sunai, I guess, are like the worst of these monsters. And they are born when humans commit mass acts with multiple casualties. We are located in the city of Verity, which is divided because of two rivals. The first of which is Henry Flynn, who is the head of South City. And he has taken some of the Sunai and is kind of trying something out that is dextery. So he is training the Sunai to only kill bad guys. Our male protagonist, August, is one of the Sunai and he takes souls by playing his own music. In North City, which is the other half of Verity, Henry Flynn's rival's name is Callum Harker, and he has a bunch of Corsi and Malkai running around, and people actually have to pay him for their own 
own personal safety and protection. And our female protagonist, Kate, is Callum Harker's daughter. Kate is not necessarily the kindest of people. If you have read And I Darken by Kirsten White, think something like Lotta, someone who is a bully, someone who is ruthlessly cruel, doing things like setting churches on fire and bullying other people. So because of this, she has been kicked out of multiple schools, and now she is starting at a new boarding school where she meets August, who is disguised as a human. Kate eventually finds out that August is a Sunai, and there is some kind of assassination attempt, and the story does move on from there. First of all, I really loved the concept. That is what made me want to read the book. There is a divided city, it is blurb to have no romance, and a connection to music and monsters. These are all things that I totally enjoy. The last 15% of this book I think was my favorite part of it. It read like a final action battle. Like, it just kept me completely going until the end. I also like that on the no romance theme, there's a scene where Kate and August are like walking in public and someone makes a comment that whenever a girl and a boy are seen together in public, people just assume that they are a heterosexual couple, even though that may not necessarily be the case. I think what made it especially cinematic was that after a lot of the chapters, there are these big cliffhangers or really big suspense builders, which really kept me turning pages. Unfortunately, even though I did like these elements, there were a lot of things that did let me down. The first 50% of the book were used a lot to describe Kate and August's interactions at school. So there was a comment that was left on one of my old videos that's actually really, really helpful in this situation. It's not all the time that authors can think up totally original concepts. Some, some people just like to use tropes that are tried and true, and that's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But where things stand out is the treatment of these tropes, and that's where I think the Savage Song fell a little bit flat. So Kate is the daughter of Callum Harker, and she is a little bit sullen, and she doesn't fit in, so she's kind of like not like the other girls, and she has really poor interactions with some of the girls at school, so she is kind of like that chosen one special snowflake. And unfortunately, I didn't see much growth in her character. Nothing really changed about Kate. The only thing that happened is that we got to know more things about her past, but I didn't really see any type of personality growth. And in terms of the guy August, he is your stereotypical non-human creature creature disguised as a human in school. He was very moody, broody, and there was nothing really that stood out about him other than he was a monster and not like an alien or a vampire, which are things that have been used in other books. Not only that, Kate's cruel acts didn't really seem to have any consequences because a lot of the teachers and authority figures at the school were pretty absentee, minus the school counselor. Absentee adult figures is something else that I do see a lot, and in this case it made the world seem like it exists in a vacuum and didn't really add any richness or depth. In the first 50%, there seemed to be more of those interactions than actually adding layers to the world. I really wanted to know like, why these monsters were the way that they were and why the city was so divided. What I really, really wanted was some more expansion upon moral grayness and not necessarily this concept of all bad guys have to be defeated. In my head, I wanted something more like the characterization that we saw in Six of Crows where everyone was a little bit morally gray, even though some of them did fit the mold for tropes. There was a little bit of conversation about how August was a monster, but he wanted to be human, and there were some like evil humans and nice monsters. But ultimately, the construction of the world is built upon a foundation in which monsters, which are bad, are created because humans do things that are bad. For example, what would this world think of someone who shot someone who broke into their house and was strangling their partner, but ultimately the intruder was the one who was left dead? Also along the same lines, there is always that classic story of morality, a man steals a vial of medication that's really necessary for his wife to live. There was really no explanation of situations like this, and thus the reader was just supposed to accept that monsters come from terrible things full stop, when actually situations may be a lot more complicated than that. In terms of world building, what we got was just multiple reiterations of what the monsters did and how much each side hated one another. We didn't really get to expand on the concept of the phenomenon or the dissolution of the United States besides a brief little lesson in a history class. It wasn't enough for me to become immersed in the world and barely enough to set the stage. Earlier, I talked about how the cliffhangers at the end of every chapter added to like the cinematic feel of the book. There 
There were also like super dramatic phrases and little mini speeches whenever the book reached a pinnacle, which really happens a lot in movies, but there was something about the air that it was done in in this book that seemed kind of overblown and disingenuous. It was kind of like she was smacking us in the face and being like, hey, this is a dramatic moment. I really don't like that like soap opera kind of feel where, you know, everything cinematic has to be just really overblown. And I think that in this case, it really was. This next thing that I'm going to touch on, I do believe like in my heart that the intention of it was good. I do think that she tried to include some mental health representation and representation of the mental health system, but there were a couple flaws. So there was a scene where a school counselor is seeing a client who is a student in the school and the school counselor just opens his drawer and pulls out a bottle of pills and just gives it to the student upon their first meeting. So I don't know any scope of practice in which school counselors are allowed to just whip out a bottle of pills willy-nilly and just like throw it at the student. This is a totally inconsequential part of the story, but I know that Victoria Schwab talks a lot about mental health representation on Twitter and her own struggles with mental health. So I was really disappointed in this portrayal of the system because this is a world that she created and this is something that she can make. And, and I don't doubt that like this actually happens in the world, but I just think that there's so much poor representation of the mental health system in fiction right now that there really doesn't need to be another one. So overall, going into the Savage Song, I was expecting a lot. I did really want to love it, but ultimately I didn't. And I ended up giving it somewhere between like two, two and a half stars. I don't know. I just know that I was left feeling really disappointed. So that is it for this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, or anything else, please leave it down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.